Welcome everyone. Today I'm going to show you how I made the foundation and the terrain for my general store. When I started the general store I was so excited to get started that I didn't make the foundation first and I usually do this first because it really helps to keep the warping down. I started off with a piece of foam board and I put my general store on there to get an idea of how I wanted it to be placed on the foundation. I roughly traced it so I knew where I was going to place it once I cut my foam board. Here I'm deciding of how much I want to have on each side and in the back and the front. And now I'm just cutting out the base and I will cut two of these, one for a top and a bottom. For the sides of my base I cut several 5 8 inch strips of foam board. That gives me a 1 inch base. If you choose to make this foundation, you may want to use different measurements than I did. This is one of the main reasons why I like to do this before I build the structure, because I need to glue some sides around the bottom of my uh, general store. It's really like the foundation and the other piece that I cut is more like the base. And now I'm just using those 5 8 inch strips to completely outline the bottom of the general store. Once they are dry, I cut some strips to go on the interior to give it some support. I started doing it this way because once a long time ago I had some cardboard that I'm going to call honeycomb cardboard that was super strong and it gave me the idea to just do this with foam board. I just glued them in randomly. I didn't take any measurements or anything. I just evenly spaced them out. Now I'm working on the base to the general store. So the general store will get glued onto this base once it's finished. I just filled in uh, long strips evenly spaced like under the general store and then I took some of the strips and cut them and put them in between as braces. The two little strips you see in the center is not necessary. I just had them and didn't want to waste them. I put glue on all the edges of the foam and then I put the top on. You can see the placement of the general store on it. So you're making like a little, a little shallow box with a top and a bottom. Next I put glue on all of the foam strips under the general store and placed it down on the foam board. Next I cut out one inch strips of heavy cardstock or cereal box to cover the edges of the base. I cut out several because some of them I'm going to paint that will be the foundation of the general store. I'm trying to paint them to match the weathered wood I already have on the porches. I'm holding one of the strips up to the, to the foundation so that I can see that I'm going to have to paint this black so that you won't notice the white popping through in case it shows. I only painted the top edge and it looks like it's going to work just fine. Now I'm gluing the strips down to the foundation. You can see the little bit of warping on the corner of the back porch and you can definitely see it on the front porch, but that's okay. It wasn't that bad and at least it's just an old west town so it kind of adds to the charm. I had some extra pieces of the weathered wood, so I cut it in little strips to make it look like they, and glued it on to the foundation to make it look like they had made some patches. Maybe there were some holes there at some point. Next, I glued the unpainted strips to the edge of the base. I thought it needed some extra aging so I took the black and brown chalk pastels and I'm just adding some here and there, heavier in some areas. I know it's probably not very authentic for the Old West to have skirting on their buildings, but it's my little world and I had to do something to cover the white. I'm pretty happy with the way it's turning out. It's turning out much better than I thought it would, the, the foundation.
I'm taking some scrunched up foil and here I'm creating like some hedges and in other areas I put little drifts of dirt here, up here and there near the foundation to make it seem a little bit more realistic. I'm using the edge of my paintbrush to kind of roll and smooth out the edges but not doing it too much on top so that I don't lose that drift that I'm creating. Or I guess we should say sand or dirt piles. I'm completely covering the foil with masking tape. I learned this long ago when I followed Where the Gnomes Live videos on making the gnome house. I feel like if I completely cover all of the foam board with the masking tape that that helps cut down on the warping as well. I love tape as much as I love sanding because it's very therapeutic to me. So I don't mind taking the time and just covering everything in tape. I'm painting Mod Podge on the unfinished edge of the base. I made some paper clay following the recipe on Ultimate Paper Mache. I thought I was recording and come to find out I was not recording. So this is all I have of myself applying the paper mache uh, clay. That little piece of cardboard in my hand I'm using to make sure that I have room for my steps. That's actually part of the pattern of them. And then I put it in front of a fan and I let it dry for a little over 24 hours and I just made sure it was completely dry. Here are some little rocks that I bought in the fish section at the pet store. I have enough rocks probably to last me the rest of my life now. I'm just gluing little piles of them randomly here and there. Just a quick little hello. I took the antique parchment and the khaki paint and I painted it randomly here and there on the base, kind of smushing it and mixing it as I went. I thought the color looked a lot like sand and dirt. I lightly painted the rocks too because I didn't want them to stand out in that other color. I liked how it turned out so well that I would be happy even if I just stopped with this for the dirt and sand look. I used a couple of different uh, moss greens to paint where the hedges would be. And you'll see that I, I did paint down on the base edge, but later I changed it to sand. I didn't like the way it looked. And here it is, all of that's complete. I just need to add some plants. Like I said before, I would be totally happy if I had just stopped here with just the paint and didn't mess with um, the sand. Even though the sand's okay, I would be happy to just stop here. When I was at the pet shop getting the, the rocks, I saw some reptile sand. I've never used it before, but this is what I'm trying to use for the sand dirt look. I mixed it with a little bit of white sand just to tone down that yellow a little bit. The lizard sand is really nice because it has those little, there's little tiny pebbles in there with the sand. But again, I have no experience with this. So I don't know how it's going to turn out. I didn't want it all the same color, so I used some of this raw umber and an old paintbrush and mixed it all up so that I could paint my sand. 
I used some of this basil paint to paint the other one to give me a little bit of a greenish color like moss. Again, I just have to say I have never used lizard sand, so I don't know in the long run really how it's going to work out. If I would have thought about it next time, I will be doing this outside. I don't care how neat you try to be. It's like glitter. The sand is just going to get everywhere because you have to work in small sections and then tap off the excess. I like the way the raw umber sand looked when I put it up near the foundation and also around the rocks and the moss just sprinkling it here and there too randomly. I learned years and years ago from a gentleman on YouTube who made puppets and I'll put his link in the description if I find it but he showed how to use rope to make plants. So that's where I got this idea, for, was from him long ago. And here I'm just, I shredded it up a little bit and I'm gluing the center really good. And then I also take some of the green and the paint together with my finger and I'm just painting the, the plant. But make sure that you're separating it pretty much while it's wet and then let it dry and you can separate it a little bit more but if it's too clumped up like that it doesn't separate really well but then again you might want that look also I didn't paint all of them green some of them I just left natural to look like old tumbleweed bushes that were ready to start rolling around and I also used some moss green to make a lighter green color and you can also trim it down and make it really short to make a different type of plant when the glue is rock hard in the center section, how I have it bunched up, you can cut that and that becomes the base of your plant. So you're actually making two plants out of one section of that rope. This is how it looks once it was cut in half and I fluffed it a little bit more with my fingers. I made this a while back, but it's rope again and I made kind of a coarse flocking with it and I colored it with some green paint. and. I wasn't sure how I was going to go about making these bushes so I just started packing that on there with the glue and then these I'm showing you here how these were actually glued onto a, a 1 6 scale house that I had made and I just cut all of the little the little green leaves off of it and I'm individually gluing them on and I'm, I'm really surprised and happy with how well the bush turned out. It was totally an experiment, but I am so happy with it that I can see myself using this technique some more in the future. I know it looks time consuming, but it really did go quickly. I made this flocking years ago with sponges, and I thought that it would be good if I use those same green leaves and glued a little speck to the center of each one to maybe look like a little desert flower that was blooming. Here's that piece of cardboard that I was using when I was doing the clay that is actually a piece of my porch uh, pattern. So I traced it out onto foam board four times and then I took some heavy cardstock and I scratched some of that wood grain into it. And then I glued the foam pieces down on the back side. And that way, when I cut them away from that cardstock, they will have a wood grain look. Then I turned them over and glued the other side to the cardstock. So they end up with the wood grain on both sides and then on the front edge where the, the, the board for the step will not be covering, I put a little strip of cardstock there to cover it up so it will look like wood. And then here's my fake boards that I made and you can see how I made them in I think my porch video or my decking video. And then I just it, glued it together and weathered it. And here is how everything came together. I'm very happy with it. I like the way the terrain does look like a desert. That's the look I was really going for, but I wasn't sure how I was going to do it. I forgot to mention that after I applied the sand, I did take in a small little 
a spray bottle, I put a little bit of glue, well, it was Mod Podge, and water, and I sprayed it so that that sand wouldn't be, every time I handled the base, it wouldn't come loose everywhere. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.